The footage you just saw was shot at 8K at 120 frames per second on the all new Red V Raptor. And the footage you're watching right now is also being shot at 8K, but at 24 frames per second. Now, most of you are probably watching on a 1080p phone screen, and so you could care less, but I wanted to take this video and talk about why I bought this camera, why it cost $25,000, 34,000, including all the accessories, and talk about if it's really worth that much money. Also stick around to the end, and I'll be showing you some 2K at 480 frame per second clips. But before we get going, big thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. We love using their assets to help our YouTube videos pop and stand out, whether that's with title animations, audio tracks, images, stock footage, After Effects templates, or sound effects. Storyblocks is the complete stock solution with over a million royalty-free assets. With their affordable subscription plans, you can download and try any asset you want. And with their unlimited all access plan, you can quickly try out multiple options and see what video title or sound best fits your project. As filmmakers, we're always looking for high quality solutions that will save us time when we need a sound or a title or a graphic created. And that's the need that Storyblocks saw in the industry and decided to fill. So we'll provide a link in the description to Storyblocks or you can go to storyblocks.com Parker to learn more. Okay, so before we talk about what makes this camera so expensive, let's first talk about what it comes with for the price. First off is the camera body itself in all its wonder and glory at almost $25,000. And then the extended warranty for the camera is about $2,000. Then you have the batteries. I bought four of them as each of them lasts about an hour and a half, totaling $1,300. Then you got to have a charger to charge the batteries and that's $250. Then a CF Express card, not any will do. To my knowledge, this is the only one in the world fast enough to record at 8K at 120 frames per second. And this was almost $1,000 for 660 gigabytes, which gives you about 13 minutes worth of recording at 8K 120 frames. Then of course you need a card reader, which is $120. Then a monitor to see what you're filming, which is almost $3,000. This, however, hasn't come out yet, so I'm using a different monitor in the meantime, but it's not touchscreen, so I have to change the settings with the buttons on the side of the camera. Next, I got the Canon RF to EF variable ND adapter, since this is an RF mount camera and I have a lot of EF lenses, and that was $400. Then I bought a couple of wing grips at $240, which honestly aren't great, but it's better than nothing until they build more and better accessories. But all of that with tax comes out to $34,548. And though that seems like a ridiculous price for a camera, considering that RED's previous full frame 8K camera, the RED Monstro, cost almost triple that at $60,000 for the body only, this was a spanking deal. So what about these cameras makes them so high end and why was I willing to pay for it? Well, let me start off by saying that I bought my first RED camera, the 6K RED Weapon, about five years ago for around $50,000. And the main reason I bought that RED was because at the time I was working as a cinematographer for a company that was shooting a documentary and they required that all the footage be shot on RED. And knowing that I was gonna be shooting many weeks with the company and realizing that the cost to rent a RED setup was about $500 a day, I realized that over the next few months of shooting this project, I would be spending tens of thousands of dollars in rental costs alone. So it made more sense just to buy. Now, fast forward five years, why did I buy the RED Raptor? First off, it's part of my job to review and test new cameras. So that's the main justification. But the first big upgrade I was excited about over my current RED was that this one has the Vista Vision full frame sensor and I am a sucker for full frame depth of field and other benefits that full frame comes with like low light performance. Plus all of my lenses are built for full frame sensors. Although it's worth noting that this sensor is actually slightly bigger than a traditional full frame DSLR sensor, which causes some coverage issues with some of my lenses, which results in some heavy vignetting. So I may have to use the 7K or 6K modes with those lenses. Which brings me to the next reason I upgraded and that is because my old red shoots at 6K and this one shoots at 8K, both of which are overkill for most of my shooting scenarios, but there are times where the extra resolution really comes in handy. For example, I export and finish most of my videos in 4K. That's becoming a pretty standard resolution for most people to shoot in nowadays. But what happens is if I want to reframe my shot a little by punching in and post, and then maybe add a little bit of warp stabilizer to smooth it out. And then maybe I want to add a little digital zoom to give the shot more movement. Well, with an 8K image, I can do all of those things and still end up with an image greater than 4K resolution. Versus if I started with a 4K image, after all that post-processing, I'm closer to a 1080p image. So that's when 8K really comes in handy. But the next big upgrade I was excited about was the frame rates. My RED weapon could do 6K at 80 and 4K at 120, and the Raptor can do 8K at 120 and 4K at 240, and 2K at 480. So having these slow motion capabilities at my disposal is something I felt would be very useful on any given number of projects. It is worth noting, however, that with each resolution drop, it does push in on the sensor to maintain a true raw image. So 
by the time you get to 2K, you are basically four times zoomed in on the sensor, so the image quality isn't nearly as good as the 8K image, but definitely still professionally usable footage. Now, the next big upgrade was the addition of autofocus. I thought I'd never see autofocus in a RED camera, and this is their beta attempt at it, so they still have a long way to go to compete with the likes of Canon and Sony, but I was pleasantly surprised with how usable the autofocus is. I'm using the autofocus right now for this talking head, so that allows me to move back and forth while staying in focus. And this was a big reason why I chose other cameras like Canon's over my other RED, is the lack of autofocus just makes it less usable in one-man band run and gun situations. And the whole sequence you saw at the beginning of this video was filmed in autofocus except for a few shots, and it did perform a little bit slow at times, but overall it made my life so much easier and allowed me to have more usable shots by not having to fiddle with manual focus the whole time. In the meantime, I found it struggling was in lower light situations where there wasn't enough light or if there was too much light like if there was a big sun flare or something. But again, for the most part, it was pretty dang solid. The next big upgrade I was excited about was the low light performance. My red weapon was terrible in low light and another reason why I wouldn't choose to use it in certain scenarios and would default to my Canon cameras, but the Raptor has significantly improved the low light performance. As you can see, both shooting at 3200 ISO, the weapon isn't usable at all, whereas the Raptor is quite usable and drastically improved. It even holds up decently well at 6400 ISO. It's still not gonna compete to the likes of my R5, for example, and definitely no are near Sony, but a huge leap making this usable in more scenarios. And the next big thing I was excited about, smaller but still great, is the lens flaring in the Raptor is much cleaner than previous RED cameras, specifically when filming at high apertures directly into the sun. You'd get these red spots that would show up in your image, and that problem is now gone with the Raptor. And there's a host of other reasons I upgraded, like increased dynamic range, having the new RF mount, better battery life, improved rolling shutter, pre-record capabilities, better ergonomics, and much more but those are the main reasons I wanted to upgrade from my RED. But the bigger question you're probably wondering is why would you buy any big bulky expensive RED camera over a smaller compact Canon or Sony camera that can deliver very similar results? Yes, it is true my Canon R5 or Canon C70 or a Sony A7S III can indeed deliver very similar results for about a tenth the cost and are much more convenient and easy to film with. But besides the fact that they're just different tools for different situations, let's talk about RED RAW workflow and the dynamic range and post flexibility that it delivers. Though my Canon R5 does indeed shoot 8K just like the Raptor, and the image quality is very similar to the RED, the R5 does however have overheating issues, a 30 minute record limit, doesn't have as high of dynamic range, not nearly as many frame rate options, and probably the Biggest issue for me is that its codecs are painfully hard to edit versus RED R3D RAW is just a nice codec to work with. Check out how each of these play back in Premiere Pro at 8K. This alone keeps me from shooting on the R5 at times is the headache I know it's going to be to edit it in post. And yes, I can just make proxies, but that's an added step to my workflow that I hate making, especially for quick turnaround projects. Also, I'd say that even though the R5 and many cameras like it are now starting to shoot RAW, not all RAWs are created equally. The R5 shoots 12-bit RAW, whereas the RED shoots 16-bit RAW. There's just a lot more color information to work with, and I can make adjustments to color and exposure and color profiles directly to the metadata all inside Premiere Pro instead of using some third-party software. So when I'm shooting with RED, I set my white balance once at the beginning and hardly ever have to change it after because I know I can just change it in post. Same thing with ISO. I never adjust it when filming because I know I can change it in post, and then I know that it'll apply it to the actual metadata of the clip. So this makes shooting so much less stressful because I don't have to worry as much about my settings. I just get the white balance and exposure pretty close and know that I can fine tune it all in post. So for that reason, reds are my favorite image I've ever worked with out of any other cameras. I haven't, however, shot on Ari, so I can't speak to that comparison, but comparing to Canon, Sony, and all those guys, red is my favorite image. So that in a nutshell is why I love red cameras and a few reasons why I chose to upgrade to the new Raptor and why it costs so much, but is it worth the heft? the price tag. For most people, no, it's not. Get something like the Canon R5 or the Sony A7S III and you're 80% there. Like I mentioned, reds are definitely a luxury price product, so you do pay a premium for incremental improvements over what is available at a much lower price. That having been said, like many luxury brands, if you want the latest and greatest and best possible cinematic image available, it's just going to cost a lot more and that may be worth it to you. It is to me, so again, it's just relative. Now, do I personally need it? No, not 
not really. This is more of a narrative film, documentary, nature, wildlife type camera. And most of the work I do is commercial and YouTube tutorials. So this is more of a fun purchase for me nerding out over and having access to some of the best camera tech on the planet. Similar to MKBHD, who shoots all of his YouTube videos on the red at 8K. It's definitely not necessary and definitely overkill, but I'm sure that he, like me, has a lot of fun working with the best cameras out there and finds a lot of joy creating the best quality images that he possibly can. And that's a point that I think is worth mentioning about buying new gear in general, is that at least for me and other creatives that I've talked to, when you buy a new piece of gear, it re-sparks the passion of filmmaking at times where I feel burnt out and uncreative. Having a new piece of gear with new capabilities just motivates me to get out and create and push myself to improve my skills to the level of my improved gear. So although I always talk about how new gear isn't the most important thing to creating great videos, it's definitely still a factor, if not as much because of the new specs of your camera, but because of the new motivation and fire that it helps create inside of you. And speaking of skills, make sure to check out fulltimefilmmaker.com to learn how to get the most out of any camera, not just red cameras. For example, last week I shot my talking head on an iPhone and the footage turned out great. So it's just a matter of learning how to use the gear available to you. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And if you have any further questions, please let me know. Ready? Yep. And go ahead. <sighs> I think that one <clears throat> And on the second day, he created water. And a man emerged forth and said, But what about this water? The finest water, untouched by man, only touched by volcanic rock. And that water was Fiji water, Earth's finest water.